Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a flight paramedic and an EMS instructor here at Idaho Medical Academy. And today we're going to talk about anaphylaxis. Medic 1-8, be en route to Northside Park for an adult male patient complaining of shortness of breath. Hi sir, what's going on today? <sighs> Out for a run in the park, having having trouble breathing. Okay. Think, right. uh, think stung by a bee. Okay, how long ago? 10 minutes. Okay, go ahead. So the general impression of our patient was a male in his 20s sitting on a park bench outside in the tripod position with two to three word dyspnea, complaining of shortness of breath, possibly a bee sting. Uh, he was alert and oriented and alert to our presence as we walked up to him. Okay, go ahead and look right at me. Open your mouth and stick out your tongue. Okay. I'm gonna listen to your lungs, okay? All right, and then I'm gonna feel your pulse, okay? Having some difficulty breathing with all of this? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you some oxygen, okay? All right. So it looks like it's a little bit swollen inside of your mouth there and your throat, okay? So all I right. think you might be having some sort of allergic reaction, okay? Okay. For the primary impression of this patient, he was alert to my presence, looking at me and able to talk to me in two to three word sentences. So from that, I knew his airway was open and patent, but with an allergic reaction, anaphylaxis type situation, I'm worried about an impending airway issue. So in this instance, I had him open his mouth and stick out his tongue, and I'm checking for swung of his tongue, swung of his airway, any redness, hoarseness to his voice, or if he has any sort of cough, which he did have some airway swelling. I'm also looking for things like angioedema, so swelling of the eyes. And then moving on to the breathing portion, I'm listening to his throat for strider, inspiratory strider. And then I'm listening to all four quadrants of his lung sounds for any wheezing or diminished lung sounds, so lack of air moving in and out of his lungs. He is very tachypnic in this situation, so a good respiratory rate, rhythm, and quality is very important with our lung sounds. And then moving on to circulation, his overall skin, color, temperature, and condition. So in this situation, generally patients with anaphylaxis have pale, cool, diaphoretic skin, and the patient in this scenario had urticaria or hives on his neck and then on his arms. My partner is going to get some vitals on you, okay? All right. You get your oxygen levels, your blood pressure, your heart rate, and your temperature. All right, I'm going to put this mask on you, okay? This is going to help you breathe, all right? All right. Okay, and so you're feeling short of breath, then any yeah. chest pain or any pain anywhere else right now? Okay, uh -oh. you have that rash that's on your neck that we can see. Uh, uh -oh. Any allergies to medications or any allergies in general? Just bees. Just a bees, okay. Do you take any medications on a regular basis? No. No, okay. Any pertinent medical history besides the bee allergy? No. Okay, uh, what was the last thing that you ate or drank? Breakfast. Breakfast a couple hours ago? Uh, sure. Okay. And what were you doing when this all started? Uh, jogging. Jogging? Okay. And this yeah. was about 15 minutes ago? Maybe something like that. Okay. So I think you're having an allergic reaction, okay? An anaphylactic reaction. And so our treatment for that would be epinephrine. So I'm going to give you that right now, okay? Okay.
Okay, so this is gonna go on the outside of your leg here. Okay, and there's man. gonna be a poke there and then it's gonna help you, okay? All right. Okay, so that medication is gonna take a couple minutes to kick in, but in the meantime, we need to get you going towards the hospital, okay? So All my right. partner's gonna get our bed nice and close and we're gonna get you transported to the hospital rapidly, okay? All right. So after our primary assessment is done, it's time to obtain a set of vital signs for our patient, a sample history, and then get that patient moving towards the hospital. This patient has a threat to his airway, breathing, and circulation, so he's gonna be a load and go type of situation. After obtaining my sample history and my vitals from this patient, we realized that he was having an anaphylactic reaction, and the treatment for that on top of administering high flow oxygen via non-rebreather is an epinephrine injection IM or intramuscular 0.3 milligrams. So we did that in this situation. Does that epinephrine seem like it's working for you? Yeah, I feel like I can breathe. Breathe a lot. little bit better? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. So you think you were stung by a bee? Yeah, yeah, I was just okay. out jogging and I felt a, a sharp pain on my arm. On your arm, okay. Yeah. I see a little red mark right here. Is that about where you thought it was? Yeah, yeah, okay. a stinger came out. Okay, and then was that, did you start feeling short of breath right after that or were you short of breath before all this started? No, it was like a minute or two after the bee sting. Okay, and then you sat down and called us? Yeah. Okay, uh, so allergic to bees, you're not allergic to any medications at all? Not that I know of. Any food allergies? Not that I know of. Okay, can you take that mask down real quick? I'm gonna look again in your mouth, open your mouth, stick out your tongue. Okay, that hives look a little bit better on your neck, but they're still there. Okay, right. I'm gonna listen to your lungs again, okay? All right. And then I'm gonna listen to your, your throat as well. Okay. It sounds a lot better. Good. Deep breaths. Okay, your lungs are sounding a lot better, okay? Still a little bit diminished, but overall a lot better than it was. Okay. Okay, let's see how far this rash goes down. All right, okay. So, uh, my partner is gonna get our bed nice and close here. We're gonna get you moved over to the hospital and get you going, okay? Okay. So after our treatment of high flow oxygen and epinephrine, our patient condition improved to the point that he was able to speak in more full sentences, not that two to three word dyspnea, but sentences with mild difficulty. And so we were able to obtain a more focused history and a little bit more of a focused assessment. We were able to rule out other things uh, such as food allergies. If he was having a medical condition before he was running, we really wanted to nail down a good timeline of he felt like he was stung by a bee and then started having this reaction. And so getting a good history and a good assessment is vitally important in these situations. This is a patient that has threats to his ABCs, so we're not gonna be able to get a full secondary assessment necessarily. So we're really trying to get a very focused uh, history and secondary assessment from this patient. Uh, as we were talking to him, he was improving. We're starting to get him moved towards the ambulance. And then once we're in the ambulance, we're going to reassess our patient every five minutes max, maybe even every three minutes or continually. So during our reassessment of a patient like this, I'm gonna be looking for that angioedema, airway swelling, reassessing for strider, reassessing lung sounds, uh, monitoring his vital signs such as his heart rate, blood pressure, SpO2, and we're gonna think about redosing that epinephrine at some point depending on your local protocols. And so in route to the hospital at this point, we would also give our radio report for this patient. General Hospital, Medic 18. General Hospital, go ahead, Medic 18. Medic 18 in route to your facility, emergently with a 25 year old male. Chief complaint is gonna be an anaphylactic reaction. Patient was stung by a bee while on a run. Initial set of vitals, heart rate 130, blood pressure 80 over 40. SpO2 was 85% on room air. 
did have hives, urticaria, strider, and wheezing with his lung sounds. We have administered high flow oxygen and 0.3 milligrams of epinephrine IM. His last set of vitals are heart rate 100, SpO2 95% on that high flow oxygen, blood pressure last 110 over 86. We are in about 10 minutes out from your facility. Any questions? All right, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to check out IdahoMedicalAcademy.com. Follow us on social media, find our YouTube channel, and leave a comment for any future videos that you guys may want. Have a good day. On camera, put this on. Yeah, so put that on and then start asking about.